Hey, Jake with B&H, and today I'm on location in my cameraman Bobby's foyer to do a simple in-home product photo shoot that you can do at home as well. He doesn't know I'm here. That's why I'm whispering. I don't want to disturb him, but let's go check it out. A lot of times you may look at a polished product photo and think, how am I supposed to do that? I need fancy gear, I need a studio. Well, I'm here to tell you that you can start practicing product photography in the comfort of your very own home. We're gonna show you three approaches to photographing the same product, starting at large budget, all the way down to micro budget. And all you need are a few tools to get started. A DSLR or mirrorless camera that gives you full manual control, a decent lens, a tripod or stable shooting platform, a stand or table for your product, one or multiple lights ranging from strobes to household lights, diffusion or reflector, a product. So what we're photographing today is a simple watch in three different setups under three different lighting conditions, continuous, flash, and practical light, so you can really see there are many ways to achieve a great shot. So Bobby chose to photograph a watch because it combines a lot of elements you come across in product photography. A watch is an object that combines different types of surfaces, such as metal, glass, matte surfaces, glossy surfaces, and it's really tiny, so there's a macro aspect to it as well. Now, you don't necessarily need a macro lens to photograph a watch like we're doing here, but if you really want to get a shot where the fine details are sharp and clean, it helps to have one. If you don't have a macro lens and you have a higher megapixel camera, then you can crop in on some of that extra resolution as well. First things first, set up your composition. There are all kinds of fancy stands and clamps that you can use to create a stable platform to place your product on. You can use a simple plate like this that goes right on a stand and attach anything to it. This mount is about 20 bucks. You can screw a wood surface on it or place something right on top of it. But in the spirit of doing this in your home, you can use something as simple as a snack tray table an end table, or any kind of small flat surface that you can easily move and work around. After that, find an interesting background or surface to lay your product on. We're using some small pieces of slate that were purchased for about 10 bucks. After that, position your product how you like to really showcase its best features. The ideal light source in a setup like this has to be the strobe light because of the amount of power it can produce in a single frame. The amount of light in the room doesn't really matter. It's not gonna really affect the image, because the strobe is gonna overpower it. When working with products, you'll want something like a strip box modifier on your strobes. The shape of the box creates a nice soft diffused light and nice straight line reflection edges, unlike a round or octagonal modifier. We're only using one light for this setup because our frame is very tight. If it were wider, we might set up a background and place a light on that. What we can do though is use this piece of white cardboard to bounce a little of our main light into some of the darker areas of the composition. If you don't have any strobes in your arsenal, then you can start off using continuous light. One of the drawbacks though to using continuous light is that it's not as powerful as a strobe, so you will have to compensate for that. This may mean keeping your shutter open longer to capture more of that light if you're working with a very small aperture. Disclaimer, continuous light is not as powerful as a strobe and therefore you must switch off any ambient light in the room so it doesn't spoil your photograph. The modeling light on your strobe is powerful enough to act as a continuous light, so we're using the same light in a new way. With a few changes to our camera settings, we can get a pretty similar result. All right, so you've now seen how we can get really great shots using strobe and continuous light. But what if you don't have access to lights like these? If you're just starting out and you're on a tight budget, there are some tricks you can do to still get great shots. For our setup this time, we're going to use our snack tray table as the base. It's simple and fast to set up and can easily support the weight of most products you'd be photographing. Having a nice surface or background with a texture that complements the product you're trying to shoot goes a long way. See what you have lying around your home that could work. We're going to continue using the stone slabs because they really complement the watch. For our lighting, we're just using a simple lamp with an incandescent bulb. The lamp has a little mobility with an arm and head that pivots slightly, so that will be a big help. 
One very useful item to pick up will be a dimmer switch. If the light doesn't have a built-in control for this, then having this little tool will be crucial. You can pick one up for less than $10 in most cases. Once you have the light in place, it's very important to diffuse it. Try finding something white with a straight edge the light can actually penetrate. For instance, we took a picture frame and wrapped a paper towel around it. There are all kinds of solutions you can come up with. Once you have your diffusion, find a way to secure it in front of your light. Keep in mind that if you have a large window nearby, you can use that as a nice diffused light source as well. But if it's nighttime, experiment with different lights you have at home. Once you have some images that you like, it's now time to take them into post and clean the images up. Because the image is being focus stacked and Bobby shot a sequence of photos for that effect, he's going to do that first in Photoshop. Once that's done, touch up the photo as you see fit and you're set. Enjoy your hard work and let all your friends think you shot these photos in professional photo studio. In summation, there's no limit to what you can't do in your home space if you have the right professional tools or the right household items. So get out there and be creative. What's gonna be your next product photo shoot? Let me know in the comments below. If you like this video and you wanna see more, please click subscribe and click that notification bell to get notified of a new video. This is Jake with B&H, just keep rolling.